Hello everyone, Ben here and today I'm going to show you three easy ways that you can go faster in race room that you may not know about or fully appreciate. Uh, but before I go any further, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single race that we've got coming up. Right, firstly, let's be clear, to get quick in any racing sim requires practice. Lots and lots of practice. And proper practice too, recreating the conditions for either qualifying or racing that you're aiming to be fast in. There's no substitute for this, and that's okay because as we all enjoy driving in sims, putting in that practice should be fun too. But there are some things in race room which can help you deliver your best performances on track, some of which have only recently arrived in the sim. So here's three quick and easy things you can do to go faster in race room. So the first one is engine maps. F1 style party engine modes have arrived in race room. Well, sort of. As of the December 2020 update, you can now change which engine map you run across the race to maximize your performance. But what is an engine map? Well, in very simple terms, they control how much fuel goes to the engine and thus how fast you go and how much fuel you burn. Adjusting these maps so that you can prioritize speed down the straights and conserve fuel in the slow corners can definitely help improve your lap times. So how do you go about setting these up? Well, first you need to assign the buttons. Go to control settings and allocate either a button on your wheel or your controller or your keyboard to shift between different maps. Then make sure you're driving in a series which includes engine maps. And at the time of recording, that includes the following series. Then take to the track and start experimenting in practice uh, in terms of what the best deployment of different engine modes is for the circuit you're racing at. Being efficient with when you're running in higher modes will give you better lap times. Just make sure you don't run out of fuel uh, pushing too hard. The second is launch control. Have you ever lined up on the grid, really pleased with where you qualified, only to bog down horribly at the start and see cars fly past you or spin up the rear tyres and nearly lose control? I definitely have, and that's why another setting you definitely want to take advantage of is launch control. Now not all cars have this, but for those that do, it can be the difference between delivering on your promising qualifying result or spending the entire race trying to claw back to where you began. At the time of recording, these are the series that have launch control in race room. So just assign the setting to a button on your wheel, controller or keyboard, and when you're ready to start the race, hold it down floor the throttle and when the red lights go out release the button and you'll immediately see the difference. For example let's compare this start that I made on a recent ranked race in Zolda where I lose at least four spots off the start with this one where I use launch control to help me off the line at Monza. It's night and day difference that can save you seconds of time and a ton of positions. The final way that you can get uh, quicker on race room uh, easily uh, is by making some basic setup tweaks. Now, I am by no means a setup expert. I simply don't have the time to invest in perfecting intricate setups for the different races that I run. And in any case, the default setups in race room are by and large very good for getting decent pace straight out of the box. But there are a small selection of settings I do look to tweak depending on the car and track that I'm running. The first of these, and it really is very basic, is don't run with more fuel than you need. You're just carrying more weight and it will slow you down. Do some practice laps and the game will give you a calculation of how many litres you need to drive a set number of laps and just adjust your fuel to fit the race distance that you're doing. You can easily use a calculator to get the precise amount you need. The second is if you're running a tin top car like a GT3 or a Porsche Cup car, I'll sometimes take a look at adjusting the rear wing to give me more straight line speed. It gets a bit trickier in an open wheeler as I find wing levels tend to impact the balance of the car more fundamentally and you have a front and a rear wing to contend with. But for example at the recent ranked races at Daytona with its long straights, I reduced the rear wing on the GT3s by about 6 points down to 2 or 3, giving me more straight line speed without making the cars too difficult to handle in the infield section. And finally, tyre temperatures can be a real pain and significantly impact your pace in race sessions. If you find you're struggling with overheating or cold tyres, there are some small adjustments you can make to potentially combat that challenge. If the tyres are too cold, try reducing tyre pressures gradually and increase the toe angle slightly. If they're too hot, you can look to slightly raise pressures and decrease the toe angle. 
Don't make big changes here all in one go, but rather small adjustments so you can see the impact of any changes that you do make. And if you do want to get more immersed in car setup, the very best guide I've seen on this is from Chris Hay, and I've included a link in the description. So there we go, three quick and easy ways you can go faster in race room. Let me know in the comments if there are other adjustments or changes you'd recommend to get more performance on track. And if you found this video helpful, do leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single race. I'll see you next time.